the blue and white Gothenburg tram, the epitome, epitome of slow and noisy public transport. Is that epitome? Epi what? Is that how you spell it? I'm confused. Epitome. That is that how it's spelled? I thought it didn't have an H. I need to look this up now. I'm looking it up right now. Epitome. Epitome does not have an H. Maybe that's an alternative spelling? I, I don't know. Anyway. I like this one. If I remember correctly, the female figures are supposed to represent the five continents. Oh great, I probably need to use this for a puzzle. This looks like a nice place. That guy's reading a book. He seems to struggle to concentrate on his reading. And that's the activist from Fardo Harbor. Although she's not very activist looking anymore. A highly fashionable looking young man appears to be explaining things to the activist girl. Is he explaining how much of a douche he is for wearing sunglasses indoors? There isn't a bartender in sight, for some reason. That is strange. Why is there no bartender in a bar? That guy is staring at the jukebox with a frustrated look on his face. He'd probably like to change the track. This guy is working diligently to win the interest of the young girl. Let's go talk to this guy and have completely avoid the activist. Funny. He's reading a Bergwall novel. One of his crime stories, judging by the cover. Hello there. He just snarled at me, mumbling something about trying to concentrate. Sorry to disturb you. Okay. Excuse me. Hey there. Hello. I, uh... Can we help you? Meet Axel. He's been trying to pick me up unsuccessfully for some 20 minutes. What the hell? I thought we had something going here. We were having a conversation. Well, you suck at conversing. <laughs> You're just spewing out lots of pseudo-intellectual garbage that you think will impress me. So why the hell did I just spend 20 minutes here? If I turned you down, another one would fill your position. So you could just as well stay. What? <laughs> You're just a stupid bitch. And that dork. Is that your date or what? Is he gonna fill my position? <laughs> hey now, I haven't... Am I too smart for you? Just because I was talking about difficult or pseudo-intellectual stuff? Like the categorical imperative by Hegel, was that too hard for you? Or was it Aristotle's myth of the cave? Oh, I know, Rakhem's razor. Was that more than you could handle? Ahem. <clears throat> Did you say pseudo? Pseudo intellectual? Did you say Rackham's r razor? What? Isn't it Occam's razor? What the? F this person's an idiot. Rockham is a character in Tintin. Is it? Actually, the Rackham is a character in Tintin. What? I think you mean Occam. Uh, Occam's razor. Rackham is a character in Tintin. Of course I fucking meant Occam. But Tintin is good too. Yeah, I like Tintin. <laughs> okay, screw this. I get it, you're just winding me up. So long, suckers. Wonderful. There. We had to get rid of him, and he wouldn't have left without a fight. Okay. By the way, you're five minutes late. You said the Iron Square. The Iron Square is out there! Yeah, it's freezing outside, so I'm waiting in here. Okay. Well, now I'm here. Good. I'm Anna. Ord Solomon. So, 
how are the otters doing? No idea. Ord, I have to ask you, are you investigating Jonathan Bergwall's death? Hmm. Weren't you a brunette? I think it's pretty obvious what happened there. Perhaps she was wearing a wig. So do I tell her or not? Yeah, sure, whatever. Yes, I'm investigating his death. So Sarah hired you herself. That's surprising. I happen to investigate his death myself, you see. So I thought we could trade information. Why are you investigating his death? Patrick wants to make sure it's really a suicide. Life insurance issues, you see. Who's Patrick? Oh, that's right. Sarah probably hasn't mentioned him. Patrick is Sarah's brother. Oh, you're right. Sarah hasn't mentioned him. They don't have any contact. And contrary to Sarah, Patrick is rather interested in their father's life insurance. Which never paid out due to his suicide taking place less than two years after the insurance was purchased. The police won't look into the case further, what with the authentic-looking suicide note and his introvert-obsessive nature. So Patrick hired me. But you're stuck now. I am. But man, there's a lot of things going on here behind the curtains. Although I'm pretty certain now you're not really investigating his death after all. And why is that? You didn't know about Patrick, and you look surprised about the life insurance issue. So, Sarah is probably using you for something else. Anywho, you might stumble upon something during your many walks. If you do, would you mind letting me look at it? I'm sure there's something I can offer you in return. I'll think about it. This is the best place to find me. Uh, excuse me. Hi there. Hi, Ord. Do you often come here? What am I trying to pick her up? So, do you often come here? In fact, I do. It's a loud, anonymous place. Perfect for exchanging information. I just have to deal with the occasional drunkard and some really poor song choices. So, what do you do when you're not researching things for Sarah Bergwall? <laughs> I sell leather jackets. <laughs> I'm a private detective. I'm, I'm just gonna be honest. I'm a literature PhD student. Interesting. So is Jonathan Bergwall a research subject? In a way, yeah. I also study cryptology. Cryptology? Like ciphers? Yes. I've gathered that Jonathan left behind secret messages. Do you think they could be clues as to who killed him? I don't know yet. They seem more related to various dirty deals and potential scoops. Yes, his moral crusading. I'm so fucking tired of hearing what a fighter he was. How the evils of the world got the better of him. If you're that hellbent on becoming a saint, you're hiding something, don't you think? Not necessarily. So we agree that there were those who wanted him gone, like those conducting the dirty business you speak of. Considering all his journalistic efforts through the years, lots of people probably celebrated his death. True. So, what books do you enjoy reading? I read mostly... Pretentious shit? That's one way of putting it. So you're not reading Bergwall's detective stories, then? <laughs> no, not really. I have to ask, how come you trust me like this? You've just completely spilled the beans about your case, about Patrick, and everything. I followed you around for a bit. You seem pretty harmless. I think you're just a common guy, a bit out of your element. You have a trustworthy face, I guess. Huh. Funny. I'm actually a convicted murderer. Funny. I'm actually a convicted murderer. Yeah, I'm sure you totally murdered that Danielle Steele novel in your latest book review. I don't write book reviews. Not any longer. Not for prose, that is. Eh, uh, where were we? <laughs> Damn it. One of these days, that rent money. I haven't had any reasons to look into the private nurse. 
Do you think she's interesting for the case? Oh, uh, no, not really. Uh, just wondering if you knew anything I didn't. She seems like a sweet girl. You know what would be nice for this menu? Is if it just grayed out the options you couldn't actually ask about so that I don't waste my time clicking on all of them. I haven't talked to her yet, and Patrick prefers it that way. But, well, I've done my homework on her. I can tell you this much. She's not on my list of suspects. Why on earth would she? Oh, don't look so shocked. When there's an inheritance involved and disagreeing siblings, murders tend to occur. From what little I know, neither Sarah or Patrick seemed to like their father very much. But Sarah had an alibi, and Patrick wouldn't kill his father and make it look like suicide. At least not before two years after the life insurance policy was purchased. Also, he wouldn't hire a private detective, would he? Sometimes killers get so confident they hire detectives just to appear innocent. <laughs> now there's a thought. <sighs> I think I have a pretty decent picture of what kind of person he was. A sanctimonious know-it-all. Oh, I'd like to think much of his journalistic work was really useful. He did expose a lot of ugly fish, didn't he? I'm more interested in him as a person. I don't care that much about evil corporations or corrupt politicians. Fine. But some of us do. A weapons manufacturer? Are they involved? Was Jonathan doing something on them? You think fast. I haven't found any links between Jonathan and Fozorb. I haven't heard of anyone from Fozorb operating on the island. I see. For now, I don't know more than I've told you. But if you should get a hold of information concerning his death, let me know. Jonathan's son is a bit secretive. It's obvious that he's cut all ties with the rest of the family. He rarely mentions his sister or mother if I don't demand some information. I don't think there's a resentment. Just some kind of avoidance. I don't really know what he does for a living, but I think he's some kind of consultant. Sometimes he goes abroad in business for long periods. He really wants there to be a murderer. Maybe suicide is something shameful in his eyes. Maybe it's only the insurance money he's after. Where can I find him? Ord, I'm feeling our exchange of information is getting a bit unidirectional here. I'm afraid I'm going to need something more from you first. Help me with my case, and I'll give you Patrick's address. Okay, fair enough, Adventure Game Woman. See you around, Ord. All these adventure game people. Talk to them for a long time, they spill out information, and then they become a brick wall where you have to give them something before they give you something. Okay. I suppose I could ask Sarah about Patrick. Hmm. Where do I even go from here? She didn't really give me too much new information aside from the existence of Patrick. Let's go back here. It's been a while since I've been here. Hello there. Hi! She's so unass like unassuming. Such a... Someone nobody would suspect... 
that I almost think maybe, maybe there's a twist and she's the one. I'm now very suspicious about her. So, what's new today? Hello, Ord. Bad news. Oh? What happened? Someone tried to break into the house last night. Hmm? No way. They tried to force open the cellar door, but they didn't succeed. Apparently, the silent alarm went off, calling the police. You better see Sarah. She can tell you more. Is Sarah here? Yes. She's with Signai in the music room. You can go and see them. All right. See you later. Bye, Ord. Oh my god, is that the third pronunciation of her name I've heard? Which is it? Is it Signa, Signi, or Signai? I'm so confused. So, how about those Gungans? Hello there. Hi! He was kind to me. He was- he all See you soon. Ord! Ord, you won't believe this. I know. Veronica told me. Somebody tried to break into the house. Father invested in some really expensive alarm, so the police got here before they could get in. The burglars got away, unfortunately. That's terrible, really. I'm afraid people know about the book, Ord, and how it's the key to Father's fortune. I have decided to move Signa to the hospital. It was just a matter of time anyway. I see. I will sell the house and everything in it. I'm tired of this place. If you still want to find the book, you probably need to hurry. Are you making any progress? Are you making any progress and the only thing I can do is ask questions or just say I should leave? Awkward. I've obtained the first chapter of your father's book. Really? That's great. Have you read it? Yes. It was rather odd. There was this girl, and the island, and the dragon. Ah, yes, that old tale. Father loved to tell it. Actually, the girl is described as a younger version of you. I see. Uh, she escaped the island, flew away, uh, nothing that points to your inheritance or anything like that. And there was nothing weird in there? Weird how? Uh, I don't know. Will you keep searching for the next chapter? Of course. Weird. Hmm. There's obviously something more to this story. My mother once showed me around some of those bunkers. By the time she worked at the military base, they were still connected through an underground network. They were used both as bomb shelter and storage rooms. Then the military base was shut down, and all the bunkers sealed. Okay, well... They were sealed, but... Is that just their entrance? Just the entrance was sealed, or did... I mean, they didn't, like, fill the whole thing with concrete, did they? That'd be kind of a waste of... resources. And it's connected by an underground network, so... If someone had a way into the underground network... Then you could potentially use them as very safe storage sites, or production factories, or something. Anything. Really. Your brother has hired a private detective. She thinks there are reasons to believe Jonathan was murdered. Oh, really? I don't know what to say about that. Sure, he had a lot of enemies, but to think that someone murdered him? The suicide letter looked authentic to me. What makes that detective think it was a murder? It seems strange that someone would purchase a life insurance and then kill himself before it would cover a suicide. Considering that I've so far never received a penny from my father, much less a proper inheritance, it doesn't seem so strange. And even if he didn't plan to make his life insurance useless, such things are not always under your control. Yeah, I never mentioned him. Maybe I should have. My brother broke up with the family and went his own way. I know he had a conflict with Dad and grew to hate him. 
I don't think he's got anything against me, but for some reason he just avoids me. And mother. Do you think he knows about the book? About how it might unlock your father's fortune? That's possible, but he's never visited the house or the cottage on Fardo to search for it, so I don't know how much he cares. What does he do, actually? I have no idea. I think he's some kind of consultant. I know he's often abroad for long periods. So nobody knows what he actually does, this Patrick. Often abroad, some sort of consultant. Could he be involved in the weapon trade himself? By the way, about my rent money. Aww. Veronica has been great since... Wait. Veronica has been great. She's not just a nurse. She's a family member. Since I moved to Stockholm, she's my eye... Hmm. Just trying to see if there's any information there about the nurse. Veronica. I try my best to help. Hello, Signi, Signa, Signi. Let's call everyone. Let's call Sarah. <laughs> Speak. This is Ord again. Ord, you need to get over here if you want to talk. Alright, fair enough. I'm just gonna go over there. Alright, oh, that's the next thing to do. I didn't give him the information, did I? Whoops! Not a very good spy. Hi. Hey, Jorgen. Yep. I've taken the photos you wanted. Good. I really doubted you'd pull it off, but I'm glad I was wrong. I seldom am. I bet. So, Jonathan instructed me to give you this walking cane. Okay, thanks. I guess. Will it open the bunker? In one way or another, it will, yes. How do you know that? I listened to an interesting confession today. Uh-huh. I tricked Stig, uh, the owner of Wyver Exports into confessing his sins for me. While I prefer to know as little as possible about things that don't concern me, I have to say I'm intrigued. He confessed making shipments for Fossorb. Then it's as Jonathan suspected. Wyvern Exports acts as a corporate front. Please, explain. Fossorb, as I'm sure you know, is the state-owned weapons manufacturer, but our government prefers not to export to dictatorships overtly, so they employ strawmen to do it for them. So, Weinvern Exports is actually shipping weapons to shady dictators on behalf of Fossorb? It seems so, yeah. I have to say, Ord, you didn't strike me as the guy who'd pull off something like this. You struck me more as a bookworm, frankly. I'm glad I surprised you. Anyways, aren't you interested in investigating this yourself? Could be quite a scoop. I don't have the resources for such an undertaking at the moment. But if you should stumble upon any compromising material, you can leave it to me. It would be a great scoop. Thanks. I probably will. You'll be given due credit, of course. Uh, that doesn't concern me. Excellent, so I might solve the main mystery, get some of the inheritance money myself, finish my PhD, and at the same time, be the key to unlocking some grand conspiracy involving intergovernmental dictatorship arms trade or something. Well, I have a very exciting life. Wouldn't that be something? But sure, that old geezer made tons of enemies. Of course, his suicide note speaks against that theory. It's not that hard to copy someone's handwriting. I mean, I doubt the police cared enough to conduct a proper forensic analysis. But would you say Jonathan was ever... suicidal? No, not really. Before they found the body, there were moments I actually thought it was just a big publicity stunt. But hey, you never really know what goes on in someone's head. Especially not Jonathan Bergwall's head. It seems pretty obvious that why if you find evidence of this, but be careful. This No worries, buddy. Why do I still have the flyer? 
Actually, why do I still have all of this stuff? The Latin book, everything. Okay, it's a walking stick. The base has some metal pegs that could be used as a key. Okay, I think I know exactly where to put that. It's a walking stick. I already read that. Okay. Uh, it seems it's... It's by waiting for the click that a move has been registered. <laughs> ah, okay. I can turn around the cane as much as I want as long as I don't let it stay long enough for the click. Okay, so this is... Uh, right, Roman numeral 6. 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13... Oh, no, that goes back to 1. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Okay, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Right, so I need numbers. It's better to hold on to the cane until this riddle has been solved. I don't have numbers anywhere from anything, do I? That certainly wouldn't be it. This is one way, uh-huh. I'm pretty sure bunkers didn't have sundial walking cane keys on them, but okay. Did I ever use this information from this calendar for anything? Strong currents to the northeast. I, I don't remember if I ever used that. It seems like so long ago. I've got a compass. No, I just need a number. I need a number. And I don't seem to have it. Let's go see if I can do anything new with Wyvern Industries exports. Okay, that doesn't work. Yeah, I'm not sure where to, where to go at this point. I need a number. And it's gotta come from Jonathan, obviously. He told me to visit that guy and he'd give me what I need to, you know, continue on. He gave me the cane, but he didn't give me the number. I don't even know where to go to continue.
Um, hold on, actually. Can I go into the cellar now? No. Dates, dates, dates. Excuse me? Hey, yep. I believe your cane is defective. No worries. Using the walking cane on Jorgen may not be necessary. Yeah, I'm not sure where to even look. Hold on, quick glance at the walkthrough. Okay, Cooper Street. Alright, talk to Jorgen. Enter the combination. It's the beginning of the calendar riddle. Taking care to wait for confirmation after entering each number. Okay, so it is related to the calendar. Okay, at least I actually know where the hell to look. So let's go back there. Is this relevant at all? It won't mix well with the cane. That won't help me solve this riddle. Okay, fair enough. Whatever. Whoa, why do I have two sets of buttons here? Oh. Whoops. Rather calm morning, but strong currents to northeast. <sighs> okay. Oh, I walked with my cane from dusk till dawn. There it is, cane. Okay. From dusk till dawn. Alright, this is going to take some work. I'm going to think about this for a little bit. Okay, I think I've got somewhat of an idea of what's going on, and I think I've maybe solved part of it. But for part of it, I just have the vaguest of ideas. So, I'm going to try it. It's probably going to be wrong. Then I'm going to look at the walkthrough. And I'm going to see if I got even close. Because I don't have... I, I don't trust this game enough and its puzzle design to possibly devote like a half hour just to trying to solve this. I don't trust it. So I refuse to devote that much to it, but I've thought about it a little bit, and here's what I've come up with. Okay. So you need numbers from this, right? So first one, there's there's four things here. This one, this one, this one, and this one. First, I wandered from wonder to wonder, though all but one have gone asunder. Okay, all but one. So, one. That's the first number. I guess. Second, I roamed with the Riders of the Revelation, but didn't stay for the damnation. Okay, Riders of the Revelation, the Four Horsemen of the Apocalypse. Four. Okay. Third, I helped an ancient hero with his tasks. You don't decline when a hero asks. No idea what ancient hero that's talking about, but it says third, so I went with three. That's the one I'm not too sure about. Lastly, I strolled from C to C, missing no note, losing no key. That one I'm really iffy about. 
It says, missing no note, losing no key. So it's talking about music. It's from C to C. So from a C note to another C note in a different octave is what I'm thinking. I don't... Here's the thing, though. I, they can't possibly expect anyone to know about... Like, one note from another and the intervals between them or anything like that, right? You can't possibly reasonably expect somebody to know that. But I don't trust the game design, so that's why it's quite possible. So from C to C, I'm thinking, what, 12? 12 half-steps or whatever it is between a C to a C? S something like that. I don't know, it's been a while since I've... Uh, done any music theory stuff. And my knowledge on music theory was never very good to begin with, so yeah. But let's try it. So I have 1, 4, 3, 12. Okay. <laughs> Nothing happened. Okay, now to look at the walkthrough and see whether I got that even vaguely right. It sounded like a gear... what? Alright, let's take a look. Okay. Uh, the combination for the bunkers on the front cover of the calendar, which is found... uh-huh. Each stanza expresses a single number in the order in which they are read, as well as the first word of each stanza indicates the number's position in the combination. Okay. Uh, the first stanza relates to Wonders of the World, of which it is popularly said there were seven. Oh, yeah, the seven wonders. Okay, it's not one, it's seven. Okay, fair enough. The second relates to the Horseman in the Book of Revelation, of which there were four. Okay, got that. The third relates to the Labors of Hercules, of which there were twelve. How the fuck are you supposed to know that? I don't know anything about Hercules. Nor is any information about... Uh, An ancient hero. I'm, I'm sorry. An ancient hero is supposed to be is supposed to make me think of Hercules. The fuck. Whatever. See, this is why I didn't trust the game and why I didn't waste too much energy on trying to solve something that is ridiculous. Okay. Um. So there are twelve labors of Hercules. So it's twelve instead of three. All right. At least I have the four horsemen of the apocalypse. Uh, apocalypse. The f oh, I was right about the uh, fourth one, not in the number, but in the idea. The final stanza indicates a full octave. And so eight. I was thinking of like half steps or whatever. I don't even know if I had to got the half steps right, but eight. Eight, I don't know, eight something, whatever. I'm not good with music theory, as you can tell. But really, who is supposed to know that? You're supposed to look up something about octaves? Who would even think of that if they didn't know anything about music? And most people don't, really in terms of music theory, in terms of notes, in terms of intervals and octaves and whatnot. I knew enough to make me think that that's talking about an octave, but most people probably would not, so that is absurd. Alright, seven. Which is four? No, 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 that's not four, that's six. This is seven. And then eight. Something heavy just moved beneath me. Not so sealed anymore? Hmm? Turned out it wasn't filled with concrete. It was just a very thick door. Hello. I should probably save it just in case there's like... Dracula's down there. Hive of Draculas. Whoa. Wait, the light's on. This place has power. Interesting. It's a picture of a rose. This strikes me as an odd place to put a picture of a rose. Indeed. 
Is there something behind it? Let's see what's under this rose. Hidden compartment. So, a cassette tape and a bundle of documents titled Chapter 2. Oh, there's the next part of the book. I'll put the poster back. Someone has put what appears to be a truck battery here, probably to replace a defunct power line. I bet it's Jonathan. An empty ragged sack is lying on the crate. It won't serve as a bag anymore, but might be useful still. The light was switched on as I opened the door. There are some toggle switches here. Only one has a label. Ventilation. I'll toggle the only switch with a label on it, ventilation. Yep, a fan started. I have no idea why I did that. I guess it's stuffy down here? Sure. Whoa. Interesting. The fan is spreading fresh air into this room. A wheelbarrow is stored along the wall. <laughs> Actually, I think the position of the wheelbarrow is just right. You're a weird one, Ord. There's some strange symbols painted on the wall. It's none of the dozen languages or symbol sets I know of. Perhaps they're related to what's in the book. A fantasy language, maybe? Or Klingon. Maybe it's Klingon. There's a panel with a number with numbered buttons next to the door. Of course. Bloopity bleepity blip. Wow, it doesn't even go like uh and tell you how many numbers there are. It allows infinite button presses. Let's listen to the voices. Wait, voices? What? And now you're soon here to believe me. I'm just keeping starving. I I'll try my best. It's not like anything ever happens here, anyway. Sure, over and out. I probably shouldn't try this door before that person leaves. Very strange, depressed person. This won't budge an inch. I think it's been welded shut. Welded shut. Okay. I've got a book to read. And I have a cassette to listen to. Let's do the cassette first. I just went to the wrong spot. Now I'm sad. Okay, I went to the right spot. I'm happy now. Sarah, if you found this tape, you've come far in your quest. You've been in the bunker that was once your mother's workplace. When she was still an employed researcher of the state, it's through her I learned that not all the bunkers are sealed and that the network is still intact. She told me how to open this particular bunker, and I added the sundial to turn it into a nice puzzle for you. This particular bunker is not in use anymore, but it's connected to others that are. You can gather evidence of the foul play that is being played. There's a certain person you must stop. He has a terrible mission. Soon all your questions will be answered. Stay strong. Funny. I feel like I was just given more questions. No kidding. Some bunkers have been sealed and are still in use. Covertly. Jonathan secretly knew how to open it thanks to his wife and made a riddle out of a riddle out of it for Sarah. Yes, wonderful. Right. So Jonathan wants to reveal some secret weapon smuggling ring conspiracy 
corruption thing. And so he decided to make an adventure game riddle out of it for his daughter who doesn't give a shit and hates him. Okay. That makes sense. Okay, well anyway, I'm going to end this episode here. I have found the previous two hours. Well, let me back up. Okay, first episode. Uh, there's definitely a bunch of dumb adventure game stuff, but it was tolerable. Second episode, I found it horribly intolerable and hated it. And now this third and fourth episode. It's actually okay. It's still got the ridiculous adventure game stuff. But now that I'm making very frequent use of a walkthrough. Anytime I get seriously stuck. And not to mention, the puzzles just haven't been so bad for the past two hours. Much, much better than they were in the second episode. Much more tolerable. They're not good. They're still ridiculous and pretty damn horrible. But I'm actually finding it tolerable. And the main reason I was interested in this game is because of the story. And so far, I am actually finding the story intriguing. As ridiculously contrived as it is. You know, he's revealing... Jonathan is revealing this... Information that he's found about the illegal things going on, and he's revealing them in an adventure game way to make a puzzle for his daughter. I mean, that's fucking stupid. Come on. It's ridiculous. I can't take that seriously at all. But somehow, despite that, I'm actually intrigued by the story. So, after the second episode, you know, I was thinking in the third episode, if I get more, more of the same, and I was just as pissed off then as I was back then, then maybe I would stop playing, but... No, I actually think I want to keep going. I find it tolerable. And the story intriguing. Not to mention... Who can say no... To... This guy. And his amazing voice acting. Hello there. Oh, hello! Hello! That's a local fishing company. Oh, uh, they export vast amounts of fish. Do they? Judging vast amounts of fish? That is wonderful! Day. Wonderful! My okay, I hope you've enjoyed so far, and I will be back soon.